To the news now, no one ever wants to report. Uh, on April 6, 2018, on a perfectly sunny day, a bus carrying the Humboldt Broncos was traveling to Nippewan to play game five of the SJHL playoff series. And as we know, the team never made it. 16 people were killed in the crash, 13 injured, and countless lives were changed forever. This was a tragedy that moved the world. So what happens to ordinary people who are thrust into extraordinary circumstances? What happens when the cameras show up and the eyes of the world are on you? What do we do when the news hits home? One of the players who passed on that night was Humboldt Bronco, Evan Thomas. Joining us tonight is the senior correspondent from CBC News, Susan Ormiston, along with Evan's parents. Please welcome Scott and Lori Thomas. What an extraordinary and unique experience this is to talk to people like Scott and Lori who have been in the middle of the media maelstrom uh, in such an event. Um, four days after the Humboldt Broncos crash, um, Scott and Lori invited me and my colleague Dan Zakreski from CBC Saskatoon into their home four days after their son had passed away. Scott was able to tell me movingly and with heart and courage how he was in a car 45 minutes behind that bus headed to the game, the playoff game, when he got the news that there was a bus crash. And one of the things that's always a question for the public and for journalists, younger journalists often, is how much do we invade privacy in moments like this? How is it that we can ask people to tell them, tell us in the worst moments of their lives details of what happened? And what I say often is that in these types of circumstances, there are many people, understandably, many people who do not want to share this, and we respect their privacy. But there are some, like Scott and Lori, who need to tell the story and who want to share. And that's really my first question, Scott. Why did you feel four days later that you wanted to tell us about Evan? It became really clear really quickly how big the, the tragedy was and how it affected the people of Saskatchewan, people of Canada, people around the world. Um, immediately we started getting flowers, we got phone calls, we got texts, we got emails. Uh, there was people at our door. At one point, there was six people standing in our driveway waiting to come to say hi to us and 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 grieve with us. And um, so we felt a, an obligation right away to communicate back because people were trying their best to communicate with us and share their loss. They felt the loss like it was their own. In Canada, any parent felt that loss. In Canada, any hockey parent has put their kid on a bus. So, as I said at Evans Memorial Service, Canadians from coast to coast had their hearts ripped out, just like we did. And we felt an obligation to let those Canadians into our journey, see how we were dealing with it, and a little bit of a hope that they can help find a way through it too, because it hit everybody pretty hard. But you wanted to tell us about Evan too. Was that part of keeping him alive? Absolutely. We said right off the bat, anybody who wants to ask about our son, we'll talk about him. <laughs> he was a great kid. He was a kid that any parent would be proud of. And he left a pretty big impact in Saskatoon and the community. And he would have left a bigger impact. And we wanted to tell his story as often as we could to anyone who would listen. And... Um, uh, the people that came to our door, the, the media that, that gave this opportunity, uh, let us share our son with the world, for sure. Lori, grief takes a lot of different phases, a lot of different times. People are grieving in different ways and at different times. When I first met you, you were not able to talk very much to us. How did, how did you get through that and, and how did you support Scott in telling us the story? Yeah, Susan, um, I, I didn't speak in front of the media a lot uh, at the beginning because I, I just, I couldn't. 
do it because I was grieving so much. Um, but Scott did. Scott was kind of the front for us. And then I watched kind of through him the strength that he gave, you know, me and said, Laura, you can do this. You want to talk about Evan. We, we want to do this. People want to hear from us. Then it gave me the courage to do it because no one wants to see people grieving, but it, it, it helped to heal, to talk about Evan and what the tragedy, how it impacted Scott and I and the other Bronco families. Was it scary? Yeah, because you're putting yourself out there, but I don't think anything is as scary as when you get the call that your son's been taken from you. So once that happens, you can face anything. Yeah. yeah. You know, your experience was uh, unique, um, and many parents of the Broncos families did not feel that they could share with the world what was happening. There was a lot of different emotions. Um, do you have any thoughts about how the media um, can react in this situation in a, in a way that is helpful to families? Every interaction we had with the media has been positive, right from the start. Uh, always, uh, you know, questioning if if they were welcome and and if we would speak to them, and um, and of course we always said yes. Um, I know Saskatchewan's a, a, a different microcosm, if you will, of of Canada, and, and specifically small town Saskatchewan. I mean, Humboldt's a tiny little town, and the locals know where everybody's going. They don't even have to use signal lights when they turn because everybody knows where they're going so it's it's uh when people from the outside world come into that small community it, it can be stressful and we were removed that from a little bit because we're in saskatoon it's an hour away so everybody that we dealt with you know checked with us first and, and made sure that it was okay to come talk and and of course it was but i know the the local people in humboldt were under a lot of stress um there was a lot of media around and in a small community like that you know People just used to go in for coffee and walk into the local coffee row and there's a camera crew there. And so I know that was stressful sometimes for the locals, uh, the local community of Humboldt. Um, you know, but I think it's a, so many things about this tragedy were so unprecedented. Uh, the location of a small town Saskatchewan, the number of people that were involved, it, it just, it drew people like a magnet there and, and people wanted to hear that story. So it's, I understand how and why it happened for sure. Lori, another phase of this story was, of course, the trial in Malfort this January and the very um, difficult week of victim impact statements. You and Scott wrote a letter to your son. That was the way you wanted to express that. What was your experience there with, with the media, again, listening on and you being vulnerable in that courtroom? How, how did you deal with that? Um, I would say, well, the media and Scott said it, they have been respectful. Um, and I would say that week especially because, you know, you've got 90-some victim impact statements that are being read. Um, it was a difficult four days. Um, and I think the media just, all they wanted to do was tell the facts and, and tell the story as it evolved. And I think they did a good job with that. And anyone that wanted to speak to the media could, and anyone that didn't want to, didn't. Because um, that, that was a tough week. Mm -hmm. That was really tough. Yeah, it was heart-wrenching for all of us. Um, just summing up, uh, Scott, um, would you say that it's difficult once the spotlight ends, too? Like, we're a, na we're a year out now you're not under that kind of scrutiny you were, but is there, is that hard too? No question. Uh, since the anniversary on April 6th, uh, it was like flipping a switch. Mm. And on one hand, we were hoping for that. Uh, you know, we were hoping for all the background noise to go away if you would, and then it did. Yeah. And now it's just us and our brains and our memories and our home and our daughter and we're trying to find a new way forward. And, you know, I don't want to say it was a, a distraction, but in a way it was a pleasant distraction, all the tension, because there's always something to look forward to. Someone who was coming to talk, somebody was, you know, somebody wanted to hear this, somebody wanted to hear that. We're going to this event, we're going to that event. So there was always something, and now it's, now it's just us, and this is our forever. 
And this last two weeks, I think, has been harder on our family than it has since the first 48 hours after the accident. It's, it's raw right now, for sure. Well, on behalf of all Canadians, I want to thank you for sharing your story so eloquently and candidly with us. You helped us understand this, and uh, you're two of the bravest people I've ever met. Thank you so much. Thanks, Susan. Thanks.